Now, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, welcome back. We'll continue to talk about the export and the import of automotives under the backdrop of the 21st century Silk Road. We already talked about the overall uh, introduction, the opportunities, the challenges of One Belt, One Road. We talked about the policies in the field of logistics and transportation. For any country, the economic policy is designed to serve the companies. We mentioned the new economic normal. The new normal will bring us new opportunities and challenges. We'll conduct structural adjustments and these are the outcomes of the uh, transformation. Now in this session, we'll talk about how the companies can conduct transformation and innovative development in the background of One Belt, One Road initiatives. I know the innovation mainly comes from the private sector, the companies, so the panel guests here today, the panelists here today, all come from the companies. They have rich experience in corporate development. So we'll talk about how can we promote the logistics uh, industry development. We have Vice President of Beijing Changjiu Logistics Corporation, Tu Xiaoyue. Now let's welcome her. Uh, sorry, him. It's my great pleasure to see old and new faces here. I'm very happy to see the topic for this session. Changjiu is the largest third party logistics company in this region, we follow closely of the latest policy changes and development. Last year, after we uh, learned the One Belt, One Road initiatives, we started thinking how can we uh, better serve our customers to provide better products and services for our clients. Today, I see a lot of uh, good products based on One Belt, One Road, and we also bring with us a service product on the automotive industrial chain. In June this year, we are going to open the train northward, and there will be a product based on that train product. When we do the market research, we did a lot of uh, customer interviews and we will also share, share, with, uh, share with you our learnings. I know One Belt, One Road is a very exciting concept. And actually, there is another phrase, the new normal of China's economic development. If you look at this chart, you will see a slowdown of China's GDP growth. This is the big future of new normal. Will not continue the extremely high uh, economic growth rate. China is now moving from a developing country towards a developed country, and this growth rate slowdown will be a normal. It will be something we have to face and accept, whether it's for OEMs the tier one, tier two, tier three OEMs, or the other customers, our friends, will be disappointed with the uh, figures in this chart. According to the research, 
China's automotive industry will reach the ceilings of development. Our growth rate will go down from 26.2% to around 8%. It will continue. I'm a pessimistic, uh, pessimistic person. I have been doing the research on this industry, and I expect a 3.99% uh, in the year 2015. Now, with this trend, how can we guarantee and ensure everyone is still profitable? One Belt One Road is a policy. But if you have noticed the latest changes in China's capital market, you must know what will be the changes that the uh, brought by this initiative. According to our strategic team, we believe that One Belt One Road initiatives will be a very important uh, mechanism for the automotive industries in both China and Europe. It will bring uh, enormous opportunities for Asia and Europe. A consultant from McKinsey told me that, real, you may fail, because he said, I don't think Chinese suppliers are able to provide the parts up to international standards. The year before last year, I saw this guy again. He said, you have uh, waited for your opportunity for so long, and now it finally came. I said, why? And he answered, whether it's the OEMs of China or the parts suppliers, those domestic Chinese companies have actually caught up with the pace of the global development. We have uh, very well participated in the international competition. So I think One Belt and One Road is actually the unprecedented opportunity for the automotive industries for both Asia and Europe. It's not only good news for the logistics uh, sector. I actually told officials in northern China that One Belt One Road is only present opportunities for me, but also I present a second opportunities for the uh, traditional industries in China. We know these industries need the basic uh, supporting services, and One Belt One Road actually connects the different industry clusters for them to have another round of development. So only with this 5% growth rate, I believe opportunities still exist. Now, from the year 2013, we started to, uh, we became the exclusive service provider for Audi. In 2013, the, the parts, engines, and other uh, accessories of Audi will be shipped from, uh, by us from Europe to China. In, within the uh, last three years, we actually shipped 2,208 EU. And Audi's inventory level actually decreased from five days to three days. This can actually save a lot of money for Audi. We are not only, we not only bring the logistics benefits for Audi and FAW, we also improve their market competitiveness in China. Now this is the official figure from FAW. Now let's guess, in 2014, how much cost have Changjiu saved for the Audi project in FAW? Let's make some calculation. How many zeros? 25 million. That's the savings we made for Audi in a single year. 
that this is only part of the achievements. A lot of colleagues and friends have offered all kinds of solutions. And I have also heard all kinds of pro proposals. There are all kinds of trains connecting the Europe uh, with ch different uh, areas in China. And there are actually 22 former and existing train routes connecting China and Europe. We know the Chinese government have made s enormous investments. And what will be the eventual benefits for the logistics industry? China's logistics system was actually built on the road systems started uh, established uh, in the late 1990s and the railway network of China. Now this CG4000 is a product we uh, launch. China represents, Z represents China and G represents Germany. We call it China Germany Express Train. 4K, what does that mean? From China to Germany, how many of you would like to try this, the taking this train? Whether you are in southern Germany, um, we're actually talking about the southern part of China. I'm sorry we cannot cover Xinjiang or Gansu, but as well as you are located in northeast China, coastal China, central China, or southern China, we actually offer the services. You can choose your port and destination. It only takes 4,000 from Germany to China or vice versa. You don't need to quote. 4,000, that's what 4K, uh, 4K represents. It covers everything, one price within China or Germany. Well, we actually offer more exciting products. In terms of customs clearance, all the other previous products didn't do a good job. If it's a commercial product, you, also, you actually have to consider all the different links. You need to provide the real door-to-door -door service for the customers. It has to be convenient. I know some of you may switch from the sea transport to us. Then you don't need to worry about the stacking. So we actually provide 15 days of free warehousing service. It applies to all tier, tier one, tier two, and tier three target cost clients. You know, uh, it's not reliable to ship your products by uh, the waterway because a lot of times they will cancel their uh, shipping. You often, I, I guess you must have experienced receiving those cancellation calls. There's, there, there has to be a combination of different things. Just like what you eat, it has to be a combination of both vegetables, meat, and seafood.
Well, recently, we received a lot of inquiries for quotes of our product. So uh, this year, we're going to have a very first um, parallel uh, services where we include the whole services from uh, purchasing to final delivery. So this product is probably an area of interest for you. Uh, are there any services offering LCL in railways? So I think many of you in the automotive logistics um, are wondering about LCL. In fact, in the China Germany railway, we offer LCL products. But I'm not sure about the capacity. Now, UKI just recently in oh, just in another meeting room said that uh, they are going to give us some of the best uh, of their clients. Well, sometimes a container can, may contain 1,000 different auto parts when they have them delivered um, in the, and, and reported in the customs. So I would say that if there's less than 1,000 auto parts in one container, then that's something that we can handle. And also at the same price, at 400 RMB. 4,000, I think he made a mistake by saying 400. Actually, it's 4,000. So we would be able to cover the whole northeast part of China, all the factories around um, China, and we could cover the whole Germany as well as the countries around Germany. So we provide um, TMI services, BMI services, we, and we also um, provide the kind of uh, pickup and delivery services both in China and Germany. We are also a customs broker for our clients. Well, I think rightly so because I always think that customs brokerage is a necessary part of the package. And also we provide 15 days free warehousing for our customers. Another product that I would like to talk about is something that I have heard over time. A lot of people said that I need financial, and some said that OEMs are very tough clients. They talked about long hours and the long cycle before they can finally get the money. So sometimes a person from Germany, Germany might said that they wanted to dispatch uh, someone to China to just just make sure that everything's done. But actually, we uh, provide express train financing on both uh, in both currencies. In China, um, we can settle it in RMB, and in Germany, we would receive, we would accept euros. So you don't need to worry about foreign exchanges, the volatility in the forest market. So some finished um, vehicle import companies would be able to benefit from this. We could also pay on behalf of the importer as long as the importer has already selected or pick, uh, select the, the cars that they want to import, then we can go over and pick up the products for them in the foreign country. Another thing is import and export broker. So this is part of the scope of our services as well. Um, and I think that it would be popular. I'm not sure if you're interested, though. So Changzhou Logistics is a company that aim at commercial products. It's a privately owned company, but the largest third-party logistics company. And we focus on professional commercial products. And we're very diligent at what we do. So in June this year, um, all the products that I have talked about are based on the one belt, one road policy. So all these products would be available on both countries, in China as well as in Germany, in June. So many are familiar with Changzhou Logistics, but some not. For those that 
don't know about Changzhou Logistics, I do think that Changzhou is the best role-based logistics company in China. And Changzhou eventually would have large, uh, very strong waterway capacities and we're the largest uh, commercial uh, vehicle carriers and we have the largest team of drivers as well as KPA. Um, it's like an insurance system. Um, this, that's, that's something that could give you a peace of mind um, without bothering too much about uh, any disputes or loss. And I think we have launched one product that's really um, a truly essentially a commercial product. The f warehousing and finished vehicles, I think finished vehicles um, is a good business right now. And we also have a really good network. In Germany, we have a wholly owned subsidiaries which can provide a localized services in Germany. So this is the whole layout of our different platforms. So I think it's a really good layout. So as a Chinese company, we are going global. So eventually, probably, we will change our names from Changzhou Logistics to Changzhou Logistics. Uh, sorry, Changzhou Global. And this is our clientele. And we're very proud to have the trust of all those clients. So don't applaud uh, yet. I would like to thank my team. So this is the C CJ project team, um, including Ellen Liu, Ellen, Alex Zhang, as well as Mr. Huang as part of our core team. And Ellen Liu is present here at this meeting. Please stand up to meet everyone and say hi. We are going to provide services that are be beyond your expectation. And we're going to be really diligent and deliver the services that we promise. Thank you. Mr. Tu just talked about the core competence of Changzhou Logistics, and he has given us a sneak peek of all his new products that are going to be launched in June. So let's look forward to all those new products. Changzhou Logistics has accumulated a lot of really good experiences in over 20 years of experience. But of course, there are always um, logistics companies that are around longer. And one of them is the Mingshan Logistics, represented by Mr. Zhang Rong. Let's hear about their best practices as well as their vision for the future. Well, actually, Yuxing or the Eurasia Railway has been around the longest. So let's hear a little bit about from Mr. Zhang Rong about Mingshan Logistics. Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here to share with you our practices in the mission logistics, as well as our exploration about One Belt, One Road, as, and our vision for the future. So in this part of my presentation, I'm going to introduce my company, as well as what we have done in logistics. Well, probably some of you know Mingxin Logistics pretty well, so I'm going to just briefly introduce our company. Actually, it was founded by a very famous patriotic industrialist, educator, social activist. So back in the 1950s, Chairman Mao said that he was also one of the four unforgettable industrialists in the Chinese history. So actually, Mr. Lu Zuofu um, handed all his operations as well as his shares. Later, so traditionally it was a shipping company, but now it's more comprehensive in what it does. 
including a lot of um, finished vehicles related services, including robo shipping. And we also have container liners from and to Japan and Taiwan. And we recently started the international railway transport just several years ago. We offer warehousing and distribution. In airport, we have a, it's called a secondary a supervi supervision warehouse. We are the top three. We're the third in Chongqing in terms of market share in the railway. Airport, uh, railway logistics. So, Minshan Logistics um, actually worked with Jeffco in Shenzhen to build a JV in there, and we provide uh, auto logistics as well as the auto parts logistics and finished product logistics to some of the major um, automotive companies. So our core competence is the rural shipping in the Yangtze River area. So this is the largest team. And we have 17 rural vessels as well as 12,000 standard vehicles space and accounting for 70% of the total market share in Chongqing. Actually, the annual volume is more than 300,000 vehicles. So usually it takes around um, four to six or seven days between uh, Chongqing to Shanghai, as well as Wuhu and Wuhan. So we work with the local agencies, regulatory agencies, and we're the very, the only one that could um, have our rural truck, uh, rural ship, uh, ship going back and forth. So these are some of our customers. The second part to my presentation is the Eurasia Railway. And I would say that uh, the back trip, the the trip that coming back to Chongqing uh, would be the most re relevant to our topic today. In 2013, we started our very first departure uh, from Duisburg, Germany, to Chongqing. And the uh, train passed through Germany, Poland, Belarus, Russia. And the total um, distance travel was more than 11,000 kilometers. So um, most of the things that were, were being shipped were auto parts. So the by the end of 2014, there were around 233 Euro Asia Eurasia uh, departures blocks. So uh, ranking the first place of China Euro trains. There were around 20,000 total equivalent units of cargo. So currently, the westbound is around two to three departures. And the eastbound is once per week. But I think this year we'll have more frequent departures eastbound. Well, actually, most of the things being shipped eastbound are auto parts. In 2015, Mingshan Logistics will continue to be the main broker of the um, e Eurasia Railway. And the eastbound railway would have two um, we have two stops where it would it would shift its direction. Um, well, actually, in the um, in Belarus as well as in Russia, uh, actually the railroads are wider at 15.24 millimeters, while um, the railroads along China are narrower. 
So there are two different um, sizes of the railways. And um, it takes two days uh, to travel across Europe, and it takes eight days to travel across China. Sorry, three days. So this is the so-called framework of the Eurasia Railway, from which you can see the whole process of how something or the, the shipment or goods are being shipped all the way through. Now, um, this photo is of uh, the rail that links Hazakstan um, to the railway. So when they change or switch the, the links or the rail, um, they would just uh, get the container up and then just link it with um, another train. And sometimes the container would be hold, uh, put on hold uh, right next to it. And then based on their coordination, uh, probably the container would be put on the plate on this, the so-called standard, more standardized uh, railway. So it only took, it only takes one day um, for uh, transshipment. We only have one stop in Duisburg for pickup. But now um, we are developing many other um, container delivery places, including Hamburg, Antwerp, Rotterdam, and Milan. Well, of course, clients could go pick up their own goods in Europe, or, or we can pick them up on their behalf. So there are over 11,000 kilometers along the Eurasia Railway. So in order to ensure the securities of the goods and, and products, we have electronic lock to monitor the location, temperature, humidity, light, sensation, etc. And we will report to our customers twice daily. The third part to my presentation is my vision for the future development. And Chongqing is positioned very well. And actually, it's at the center, right at the center of two of the three major strategies in China. And I would say that it's the most promising city to implement the Belt and the Road, as well as the Yangtze River economic belt policy. Also, is a really important hub to connect uh, railway, waterway, as well as um, bus. So it's a hub that's right at the center of China, at the heart of China. So in the second half of next year, sorry, in the second half of last year, Mingshen firstly operated the imported finished vehicle block train from the European Union countries to China including um, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Volkswagen vehicles. <laughs> Mingxian Logistics is really experienced um, because it's an operation company of Chongqing Railway Port. So is really experienced in operating the um, middle size trains. And it's also very good at uh, container transfer, as well as the packaging, uh, customs brokerage, warehousing, and the uh, short, short distance uh, shuttle. Many people are interested in um, about the turnaround when the cars or the parts arrived in Chongqing. So based on our previous experience, in March the 12th, 2015, we finished the customs declaration. So, um, so uh, the car departed from uh, 12th March and arrived at 25th of March. And then all the goods were declared in the next day and then customs uh, duties were paid right after. 
and then when all those goods or cars are released, um, the customs would be able to do all those ex um, importing importing formalities. Now the devening and shuttling normally takes one working day. In the future, we may add additional line. Now on the fifth day, the test results will come out from CIQ. This will take one to two working days. So altogether, it only takes five working days. And we receive very good customer satisfaction. We know an important advantage for us is the time. This year, we continue to speed up in Europe and Lanzhou Chongqing Railway. And the overall process will be restricted within 14 days. In the future, we'll even shorten it. And our purpose or our goal will be 12 days. As my colleague from Changzhou said, sometimes it's more efficient than shipping by the waterway, which will help our clients to save a large cost. Assume a container is worth 1 million RMB. By conservative estimate, if we use 5.3% of interest rate, we can save customers of 600 US dollars per container. This is quite uh, attractive in the current market. And in May this year, we will add additional two Trans-Euro-Asia railway lines. We'll add the route from Duisburg to Chongqing port and to the border of Yunnan or Guangxi. We are also going to open a transit uh, connecting Chongqing with Southeast Asian countries. We can use the intermodal transportation switch to uh, road to ship our products to Southeast Asian countries. Chongqing is the third largest automotive base in China. We have the Chongqing Tan port, and we also have a newly built Guoyuan port with a capacity of one million automotives. And the Chongqing government is now building another railway route, which will help to connect the railway with the Yangtze River so that we can connect to the Yangtze River economic development zone. And Mingsheng will contribute to the fulfilling of all reasonable needs from all res respects. We'll bring up all the resources to fulfill our customer needs and achieve high uh, customer satisfaction. Thank you. I just said to Mr. Zhang, you may have not noticed that in front of each speaker, there is a timer. You must have noticed that Zhang Zong has a very good uh, manage time management. He just used a, uh, his 15, uh, she just used her 15 minutes. And we know this trans uh, Euro Asia train is very on time, has very good uh, timing. So thank you, uh, Ms. Zhang, for your excellent introduction. In the last session, Mr. Zhang talked about the One Bell One Road initiatives. And now there is something I'd like to add. 
whether it is one bell one road or the transportation based economic corridor we should not only have a brand new logistics this intermodal transportation it's also important to focus on those most important dots our previous speaker already mentioned the free trade zone now for free trade zone for the companies where are the benefits are there any innovative models we can explore now let's welcome Assistant General Manager Ye Lei from Shanghai Automobile Import and Export Company. Welcome, Ms. Ye. Distinguished Mr. Ma, Mr. Zhang. Yesterday, I was watching the Laureus Sport Festival. And this reminds me of faster and stronger. It concluded at 11. So I didn't actually, uh, I was pretty nervous that I have to give this presentation today. Although I have been in, in working in the industry for over 20 years. Our customers have raised a lot of demands for us. Our uh, employees want higher salaries. OEMs want higher standards. Government wants stricter policies. And this makes our jobs even more difficult. Today, I have met a lot of friends, a lot of experts, suppliers, and the specialized companies along the supply chain. We know the logistics technology is growing and developing. It should be uh, the good news for our industry. However, the requirements of our customers are actually uh, even higher today. So as a company in the automotive supply chain, we have been talking about how can we get the extra margin. That's why I'm under a large pressure. When I was given the topic free trade zone, I was thinking, will we be able to explore new ways or new models? Can we no longer focus on the extra profitability? Can we find something new, something free like WeChat, but is stronger uh, and faster? which can integrate all the wisdom and applications. I have only been working in my current position for a year. So today I'm going to share with you some of my thinkings in the past year. Now first, pain points in the business. Then I'm going to talk about the innovation advantages some of the possible development trends. And we are also going to talk about our company. Now the importing business does have a lot of pain points. Number one pain point, convenience. It's a company that the government actually have a very strict supervision and monitoring. All the relevant department pays close attention to this industry. 
Of course, this brings us a lot of benefits. It makes it more convenient. And there are a lot of links in the logistics from LOC to Europe. But the different links are actually separated. They are not physically integrated together. Those who are in the design or packaging or in operation do not have coordination or collaboration. So it's difficult to realize the synergy between the different links. And third, cost. You know, the packaging, shipping cost, or the convenience of loading and unloading, these different jobs, these different tasks, sometimes are in conflict. If you increase or reduce the cost in certain link, it will actually, um, the cost in another link will uh, change reversely. And the document preparation process is quite complicated. We already talked about the weak capability in coordinate overseas uh, document uh, preparation. And there is a lot of know-how involved. You need, you really need to uh, be familiar with the procedures in customs clearance in different countries. Otherwise, it will create new pain points. Now, we also have just started launch the pilot to integrate the import and export. The cost of the supply chain accounts for a high proportion of total cost, also weak integration capability. I believe you must have felt these pain points. Now, does the free trade zone have innovative advantages? Now, I have been working in this area for over a year, and I believe there are definitely advantages. For example, in free trade zone, the overall efficiency of operation can be improved by 18%, while the operation cost can be reduced by 12%. If you look at the import and export of SAIC as an example, if the total trade is uh, 20 billion RMB, then we can reduce 700 million, uh, uh, so sorry, 70 million RMB of cost. So operation efficiency will definitely be improved. Now these are the 15 policies that I listed, and I uh, will not uh, go through them one by one. The main difference is you will, whether you will have a physical warehouse in the free trade zone, and there will be some uh, seven corresponding policy difference. I'll skip this slide. Now, in terms of the application explorations, one exploration is the combination of trade and finance. For example, supply chain finance and supply chain services can forge synergies. We can find an approach to achieve a win-win outcome for our customers, to offer better services for our customers. Simply put, finance, financing cost is 1.5 to 2% uh, lower than outside the free trade zone. 1.5% or 2% is already the profitability for a lot of logistics companies. 
And if the oil price can will uh, rises, they will have even thinner profitability. So we're going to explore those policies and see whether we can have innovations in some areas such as the deferred payment, uh, some hedging practices. We can have deeper cooperation. There are a lot of successful cases in the combination of trade and finance. Now, this is the first point I'd like to share with you. Now, number two, some of the businesses we can conduct in uh, combining the trade and finance. First is capital management. And second, investment financing. Third, international settlement. There are a lot of things, for example, the hedging settlement. These are uh, are already available. The number four is uh, auto finance. If you have the 30 billion RMB of trade, then you can save 1%, which is 200 to 300 million RMB. This is, our, this is the benefit you can receive from trade finance. This is quite a considerable profit. Now within Free Trade Zone, we are the third company to launch the pilot project in integrating trade and finance. And our company is actually the first auto company which launched this pilot project. So Shanghai Automobile Import and Export enjoy uh, the improvement of efficiency after we launch this pilot uh, services. The return of this project is even higher than the savings we can make from the oil price uh, reduction. Now, development directions. Now we're talking about the industrial development 4.0. And we propose the 4.0 version of the uh, supply chain. I don't know if we are the first one who proposed this concept, but what matters more is who is the first company who are going to implement this concept. So I'm going to talk about the uh, content, the essence, and the practices in 4.0 supply chain. First, what it covers. It means that we're going to leverage the big data, cloud computing, mobile network and telecommunications technologies to make the logistics industry more uh, smarter. It means a centralized, uh, a switch of model from centralized control to decentralized enhancement control. This may uh, totally transform the division of labor in the traditional supply chain, and new jobs and, uh, may emerge. Let me give you an example. A lot of companies in the logistics in com uh, industry invested millions in developing the GPS, but it's only one way. You can only track the location of the truck, but this is not the technology in 4.0. We, what we need is two-way. You need the two-way communication. Otherwise, what you can do is learn, you know the location of the truck, but you don't know whether the truck is in um, the traffic condition of the truck. So the two-way communication will be the new feature in the supply chain 4.0. The essence is we have to solve the customer's pain points with precision and speed. 
What we do is the rigid supply chain passed. For example, 10 days is mandatory for delivery. But today it's different. Customers sometimes recall even after you already ship the products. So we need a more flexible supply chain. I asked what measures we have in uh, Shanghai Auto Industry Company. So we work with the government agencies, customs, port, and we work with consultancies such as Rolenberg as well as um, suppliers, supply chain companies. And all together, we continue to develop the concept called the supply chain 4.0, and we would utilize the free trade zone policies. So the supply chain 4.0 eventually would evolve and become 4.1. 4.0 has nothing to do with financing. So 4.1, 4.2 will have the financing um, elements out there. So in the free trade zone, well, actually, I'm, I'm in charge of the operations uh, center, uh, which will finish its build up in 2017. And this operations center would be the uh, Shanghai Auto Industry Company's hub of distribution. So it's called the SAIC International. But at the same time, it would provide better services to its domestic market as well as its foreign <laughs> clients. Thank you. Mr. Ye just talked about the different policies in the F trade zone, a free trade zone, and he started to talk about the sore points or the pain points. And then he further talked about the policies. And I think it was pretty insightful, especially uh, the supply chain 4.0. I think it's an interesting concept. So where is the 1.0, 2.0, or 3.0? So I think, as we know, um, most of the systems we focus on um, automation as well as um, intellig intelligent supply chain. So how is this one different? So Mr. Ye brought it up, brought up the concept of supply chain 4.0. But um, I think it's an innovative idea. But well, let's look forward to the specifics as well as the breakthroughs in the future. So I would like to thank Mr. Ye for his forward-looking presentation. Now I would like to welcome a representative from a company that everyone's familiar with, BLG Logistics Group. So we've talked a lot about the One Belt, One Road. And um, BLG representative would be able to talk about One Belt, One Road from the perspective of a foreign company. So it's been deeply rooted in the Chinese market. So I believe that the management, managing director of BLG Logistics Group in China will have his fresh perspectives on One Belt, One Road. So let's welcome Mr. Li. Hi, everyone. My name is Willie Lee. I am the management director of BLG Logistics Group in China. So I'm responsible for the business in China. So today, I'm going to talk about how BLG Logistics Group's to go uh, uh, help Chinese companies to go global. Now, in China, a lot of Chinese companies are thinking about going global, and many of my clients mentioned that going global is pretty challenging, especially in foreign markets. So some, sometimes they would face very really complicated legal environment, customs, human resources. But as far as I know, uh, many Chinese auto companies would use FOB or CIF when exporting their cars or parts. But now with the going global strategy in China, many Chinese companies are ambitious and um, they wanted to make themselves a multinational corporations. So 
one thing that we should keep in mind in um, going global, that is to know your destination really well, including the end users and customers and dealers. You have to know their demands and you have to know the volume where the cars go. You have to track every one of your exports see who the end customers are. And I think this is one thing that car companies in China would need to know and learn when it goes global. So I think that's where BLG Logistics come in. First of all, a little bit about our company. BLG Logistics company is a German company with over 100 years of history and we focus on auto logistics. Currently, it's the number one, is the market leader in Europe in auto logistics. Now, there are 16,000 employees, half of them in Germany and another half of the employees are all over the world. So now we have 1.2 billion euros of sales it's actually a national uh, state-owned company. 90% um, of the shares owned by the state government of uh, Germany. Previously, we have uh, involved in the rural uh, shipping business, but now it has evolved into a worldwide company with, with worldwide presence. So this is the overall layout of our presence. And you can tell from the chart that while Germany is our uh, biggest market and it is our focus, but we also have presence in um, Eastern Europe, uh, Ukraine, Russia, England, Spain, Portugal. Also, apart from the Euro continent, we also are present in BRICS, such as Brazil, India, China, and South Africa. And these, um, we have invested heavily in these markets. So we have three different uh, businesses. The first is the container um, and operations and the ports. Now, around the world, we have a, we operated in 11 ports. And last year, we managed 14.8 million TEUs. We also provide relevant services, such as uh, transshipment, as well as container yards, operations, uh, packaging uh, of containers. So everything that's related to containers. The second part of our business is automobile finished vehicles. We are the largest auto logistics service provider in Europe. So worldwide, we have handled 7.65 million vehicles. The third segment of our business is contracting, um, warehousing. I would like to talk about finished vehicles, and this is the major part of my presentation. We provide a wide scope of services, including um, supplier um, and how the car um, is shipped from the factory right to the dealers in the destination. So first of all, we are a port handling uh, service provider. Currently, we operate in 26 finished uh, vehicle ports. Overall, in our network, we have handled uh, 7.65 million finished vehicles, and over 2 million of them uh, were handled in one of the major port in Europe. So a little bit about ports as well as um, container yards. One of our advantages is the technical processing. So sometimes the cards would uh, need to have some of their specs adjusted. And uh, sometimes because of the weather, 
or because of all different sorts of reasons, um, the cards might be damaged a little bit um, when it arrives at its destination. So we would be able to fix these cards when it arrives at the destination. Also, we provide storage and we have our own um, fleets and we have our ships. A little bit about contract logistics. This is, so I, I would say that the biggest um, of our advantage is on-site logistics. So in Germany, we provide on-site logistics in over 10 companies. So from suppliers to, you know, just, just the whole, uh, throughout the whole supply chain. We're involved in the whole supply chain. Lime feeding, uh, just in time, just in sequence, or as well as light processing, technical services, some of the non-core uh, services are, have been outsourced to our company. We're a global company, but also a, a multinational um, company, globalized company. So I think we have a lot to offer to help Chinese companies going global. So we could provide uh, rural shipping along the coastlines in China and Tianjin. Well, Tianjin is a really big rural port. So we have a JV in Tianjin, where we own part of its shares. Um, we would help Chinese companies uh, with rural shipments in Tianjin port. In Shanghai, we're thinking about participating in the rural terminal operations in Shanghai. We're thinking about in Nangang port, um, operates in the rural port. And we will be involved in the operations as well as the management of human resources. And the port have been built up more or less. And there's a yard there. Uh, there's a one uh, phase one yard, phase two. Uh, phase two is still under construction while phase one is already done. So we're going to work with other companies to um, build, uh, say, the technical service center. So a little bit more about our overseas network. We are rooted in Germany, and Europe is our biggest market. So this is the network along the coast, along the ports around the coastline, including Hamburg, um, Bremen, as well as St. Petersburg. Simply around uh, the coastlines, we have rural shipments, and also in inland uh, canals, such as the Rhine in Germany. We also have some of the resources and investments along the inner rivers. So East Europe is an emerging market, so many of the cars from Japan, Korea, um, China, Actually, many of those car companies are thinking about um, having a factory there or have establishing, exploring the market there in East Europe. We have two companies in Russia. One of them is in St. Petersburg. We have two rural ports in St. Petersburg and also one um, warehouse in inland Russia. We actually handle the exports from one of the major car companies in China through St. Petersburg. We provide them with warehousing, um, customs brokerage, as well as the distribution in Russia. Another company is in Moscow, in Russia. It's a road-based company, and we have a fleet that controlled over hundreds of cars, bus, buses. So this is um, the Finnish vehicle uh, carrier fleet that uh, we're operating in Russia. 
there's another new product in Russia that we offer. So from St. Petersburg, um, departing from St. Petersburg, um, we work with a railway uh, company uh, through two railways. And it's a round trip. Another link or railway link is from St. Petersburg to Siberia. Next up is Brazil. Over the last decades, we have invested in a lot in the Brazil market, and we have uh, many of our, our staffs, our offices around Brazil, including where housing services um, is available. So this is a project that we just won last year from Chile, and Chile just had a new factory in um, Brazil. and. Uh, we won the tendering, and we managed to do inbound and outbound logistics, um, including receiving, pickup, as well as the packaging, knockdown packaging, pick and pack, um, placing orders uh, just in time, just in sequence. So we are involved in uh, the imported parts as well as their locally sourced products. Basically, we are we're everywhere. So when the finished vehicle is made, we would gather all those cards and ship them to a container yard right near the factory. And if we have the order or um, we, we get the message from the company, then we would ship those cars from the container yard out to elsewhere. So we're a globalized company, and we adhere very high international standards. We have been in Brazil for years and years, and we have many clients that we're serving, including European companies. So they were really experienced. Um, in the local market, and at the same time, they are well versed of the European standards. In the United States, we mainly focus on inbound logistics. I'm sorry, in Germany, we focus on inbound logistics. And in the United States, um, we work with for Mercedes Benz in terms of inbound logistics. In Tuscaloosa, we have been operations there. So uh, Mercedes outsourced a warehouse with an area of 11,000 square meters for us to operate. So we would be responsible for semi-knockdown operations, suppliers logistics, on-site wax operations, etc. So this is a supply logistics center. There are around 17 just-in-time and just-in-sequence uh, tier for suppliers who commissioned us to provide automotive logistics right near um, their facilities. So this slide is about our presence in South Africa. So we have offices from north to south. Well, most of the clients we have in South Africa includes Toyota, General Motor, as well as some German auto companies. <coughs> we operate in con uh, container yards, container ports, as well as auto parts in South Africa. A little bit about our operations in India. We are present in mid-India, as well as in Chernia. Chennai. So we work for BMW as well as local automakers and provide them with auto parts, inbound logistics, and finished vehicles services. So Malaysia is also one of our focuses. Our major scope of business there is to work with Mercedes on finished vehicle logistics as well as auto parts logistics. And we also um, 
provide spare parts for Mercedes. So that concludes my presentation. Our advantage, our core competence is we are experienced in helping Chinese automakers to go global, whether you're exporting finished vehicles or just parts. We feel that we are in a really good position to help you. Thank you. After learning the global businesses of BLG, now we have the last speaker in this session. He's going to talk about the shipping business of Autolink. Now let's welcome Nikolai Devori Yankin, the general director of Autolink. Last but not the least. Um, so, good day, everyone. I really think that my presentation will be very interesting and useful for you. And I see that somebody in already already sleeping. So wake up, please. Uh, I think I already my time is my time is counting. So I have only 10 minutes to speak briefly about our business and our solution for shipments between Asia and Europe, because the section is about 21st century Silk Road. So uh, again, good, uh, good day, de delegates and conference participants. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Louis Kumi, uh, for this conference and his team for assistance and a great opportunity and pleasure to be here and uh, share, borrow some of your time to present our business. So. Uh, we know that automotive logistics is a very conservative business. There are not so many uh, new solutions at the market. Most of companies just optimize uh, current roads. Uh, Autolink company is very flexible, and we try to find the most appropriate solution to every new market which we enter. That's why today I'm going to present you Autolink solution for car deliveries between Europe and Asia. Uh, some structure. Uh, firstly, I will say uh, some words about our business. Uh, then I will share some automotive market statistics. Uh, we also discuss uh, current finished vehicle supply chains. And then I will describe in details our offer to the market. Autolink Group is one of the leading providers of Finnish logistics in Europe, Russia, and Central Asia. I would like to point out that we are big experts in doing business uh, in Russia and Central Asia because a lot of European companies, they have their facilities mostly in Europe. Uh, we uh, know how to do business in the middle between Europe and Asia. Since 1960s, our company has, successful, has been successfully operating at automotive logistics. We transport every year more than 350 vehicles, most of which are shipped by rail in our own wagon fleet. We offer customized logistics solutions tailored to each special client's needs, paired with personal service and close monitoring. We are proud to say that our clients have a peaceful sleep every day. So, uh, we heard much information yesterday about automotive statistics. Let me point out, out uh, some major facts once again. So, we see that uh, car sales are growing. We see that the world car sales increased by 26% for the past eight years. In 2014, the addition was 3.4%. And of course, the biggest market in the world is China. And of course, uh, that's why it's very attractive for everyone who is sitting here. We see that growth was 
free, a 30.26% for past four years. It's incredible for the automotive market in the whole world. So let's see an European and Central Asia market. Also, we have uh, a little growth in Western Europe, Central Asia, Iran. Russian market uh, has fallen down by 10%, but at the same time, this is one of the uh, most interesting and the, big, and the big market in Europe after UK and Germany. Also, Central Asia is very fast growing market and very interesting in the current situation of uh, finance crisis. And Iran, also very interesting market, uh, especially for car export from China. So, uh, car sales are still growing and we see the demand for automotive logistics uh, for shipments between Asia and Europe. We see at, at the following figures, for example, car import, in, uh, car import in China, of course not only from Europe, but from the whole world, but uh, we see that figures also are incredible. Also, uh, we see the big amount of uh, car exports from China, from Europe, from uh, to, uh, to Europe, to Latin America, to Iran, to Russia, to Central Asia. Uh, yes, uh, and now let's they see uh, current logistics road that we have. We all want uh, to see the new solutions, and what we have right now, uh, the oldest one. A road for cargo between Europe and Asia is sea shipments uh, via Suez Canal, so from Shanghai, Tenzin, Dalian, other ports uh, to Europe. It's about 65, 70 days. Okay, maybe sometimes it's 60 days. Uh, of, or just uh, also a sea shipment uh, via Vladivostok port, Russian Far East, uh, for car deliveries to Russia and uh, Russian Siberia, Ural, and uh, Eastern Europe. And also we have, uh, we see two uh, roads via rail, via rail in containers. In containers uh, via uh, Dastik, Kazakhstan, and Manjuli, Russian border. So one row, uh, we already heard presentation from the uh, Chinese companies, European companies who are operating there. And of course, each of these road has its advantages and disadvantages. Lead time, amount of reloadings, and capacity. So you see that, uh, of course, sea road is very interesting in terms of capacity, but in terms of time, two months is a really really much time. Uh, opposite containers by railroad, really good lead time and re amount of reloadings and very little risk of damages, but capacity, capacity is low. Uh, so that's why uh, we consider all these factors and decided to offer the market the most efficient solution by our opinion. This, let's see. Uh, last year, we constructed a full new to rail terminal at the border of Kazakhstan and China. This is the brand new sta railway station, Horgos. Horgos at Chinese side and Altenkol at Kazakhstan side. So, uh, we see that uh, this is future for finished vehicle logistics because for, in, for these shipments, we use special car carrier wagons uh, with loading factor uh, 10, 12 cars per each wagon. So, we know that one container 
is all, a loading factor is only two, three, maybe four cars, and we have 12, 12 cars per uh, wagon. So it will be, this is much of, uh, efficient solution. Some words about our rail terminal in Alton Coal. So you can see that we have rail gorges for accepting both type of wagons. A Russian wagon 5020 rail gorge and Chinese wagons 1435 gorge. Storage area asphalted for, for unloaded cars and two ramps as well. All operations are made according to strict European rules of quality. Uh, this is uh, pictures of our own wagon fleet, which we are operating in the whole territory of Russia, Central Asia, and Eastern Europe. This is very important to control all business, all logistics business in this sphere, that when you have your own wagon fleet. Because a lot of European companies, they have in this territory, in Russia and Central Asia, or truck, uh, only trucking fleet. Nobody wants to invest in rail and in car carrier wagons. We try always to be very flexible and find the appropriate solution, as I said. That's why we take this risk and invest in full covered wagons for car shipments at this way. Uh, at, this, at this picture, I would like to point out once again the network of our hubs which we built, constructed with our partners. This is very important that we have hub directly in Siberia, in Novosibirsk city. You no need to move cars from Manjuli to Moscow and from Moscow by trucks to Siberia or spend 60 days to go to Finland, for example, or Germany, and then uh, deliver cars to Siberia and spend 20 days again. You now have direction, uh, direction road from Khargors to Novosibirsk, and we will make all customs clearance there, final distribution and car storage, full range of services. Sorry, three minutes. Yeah, I see. Uh, the same, Neftikansk, Ural region, is very prospective region for, car for Chinese car sales in Russia. Please pay attention, Gorgan in Iran. Also, we can deliver cars there. Iran is the third market for exported Chinese cars. And of course, our facilities in Europe for further final distribution there in Paldiski, Estonia, our own sea terminal with good rural connections in Europe. Malashevich, the central of Europe in Poland for further uh, trucks delivery. Final distribution, of course, made only by our trucks, full control of operations, international and domestic shipments. And for special models, brand new, we can of uh, also full cover trailers. So what we have at this solution? Full control, Autolink own infrastructure, own car carrier wagon fleet, own tracking, and strict quality. Everything for client satisfaction. Uh, we set up solution that allows car producers and OEMs to move large quality of passenger cars and LCV between two uh, regions very quickly. We know that nowadays time is very expensive resource. And our clients know it very well. That's why they trust us in our work. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we have our stand in meeting room, so please uh, you can communicate with us and I will 
give my presentation and uh, answer all your questions regarding this road in details. Thank you very much. Seems that your company has a very comprehensive network covering Asia and Europe. Now it's 12.50. So I guess you must be very tired. So let's applaud for ourselves for uh, commitment to the industry. This afternoon, we're going to talk about, we already talk about our understanding of the logistics industry and relevant government policies. So we also talked about the product development. I think everything is just beginning. What we learn is the Chinese central government is still working, uh, is conducting relevant work around these details. Yesterday, a Chinese official introduced the three-year logistics plan of China. And this morning, another official also talked about the top-level design of the logistics industry development in China. Later, the policy coordination and project promotion will be uh, further rolled out. This morning, the experts talk about the logistics industry development under the backdrop of economic recovery and the One Belt, One Road initiative. I believe what they said are very inspiring for us. I quite agree with what they said. I just want to make one additional comment. I want you to pay more attention to this. This morning we talked a lot about the transportation route. We also touched on the industrial integration. We also realize that the delivery and pickup are important. In Europe, only Duisburg, Hamburg, and a city in Poland are the most important hubs in Europe. I personally think we also, in the future, we also need the, I think these hubs are more concentrated. We actually need more uh, addition of more hubs in Europe. I hope in the future we'll see more, op the opening of more routes. And the network development can contribute to the economic growth as well as the development of the automotive logistics industry. So in conclusion, I'd like to extend my appreciation to all the panelists and the guests here today. Thank you.